Thank you. We turn now to our next item of business, which is topical questions. And question number one is from George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the results of the European elections. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes the results of the European Parliament elections. It was a stunning success for the Scottish National Party. Uh, the European Parliament's elections uh, also, President Officer, confirmed that there is an overwhelming support in Scotland for remaining in the EU. It's clear that the results across the UK uh, show a tale of two countries with different political views, values and visions for the future. Uh, I would like to congratulate all the Scottish MEPs elected, uh, particularly the, the new uh, elected MEPs, Christian Allard and Ily MacLeod. President, obviously, you will be aware that they were members of this parliament. And with the election of Sheila Ritchie from the Liberal Democrats, there is now gender uh, balance in the Scottish contingent. But I would also like to uh, take this opportunity, uh, in the absence of any Labour members in this chamber, to pay tribute and extend our gratitude uh, to the service of David Martin, who has pro provided uh, a, a distinctive uh, wisdom and commitment and advice on Scottish matters in the European Parliament for many decades. And I think it's fitting that we pay tribute to him at this time. George Adam. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Uh, the does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the results were an astounding rejection of Brexit here in Scotland, with the SNP 23% ahead of the Brexit party and taking the highest share of the vote of any party in Western Europe? Does the Cabinet Secretary think Scotland has again made itself clear it's not for Brexit and that this issue should go back to the people in a vote which I'm confident that once again the people of Scotland will make their decision that their future lies in Europe? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, and the Scottish people's voice has been heard. The Scottish Government has consistently made clear that the best option uh, for the future of Scotland and the UK as a whole is to stay in the European Union. And the results demonstrate that the UK political system has failed and it has failed Scotland utterly. We are clear that Brexit ignores our views, the, the views of this Parliament and the people of Scotland. And that is why the Scottish Government will continue our efforts for another referendum on any deal agreed by Parliament. And if Parliament cannot support this, the default should be revoking Article 50, not a no-deal Brexit. We will continue to do everything we can to stop Brexit and all the ensuing economic damage to Scotland that would entail. George Adam. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the shocking reports of EU citizens across Scotland and the rest of the UK being denied their vote on polling day. Can I ask the Scottish Government what pressure it has it put on the UK Government to investigate this scandal and can it confirm that the UK Government was aware of the risks months ago and still made no preparations until the last possible moment for these EU elections, causing the confusion we saw unravel on polling day? Cabinet Secretary. Participation in the European Parliament elections in wh whichever member state uh, they have chosen to live is a fundamental right of all, ye all EU citizens. Uh, the Scottish Government is therefore deeply concerned about the difficulties encount encountered by some EU citizens who uh, were denied their right to vote. And it's important that we understand there was different experience in different parts of the country. But the member is absolutely right. Uh, this challenge was foreseen. The UK Government could and should have done something to ensure that no EU citizens were disadvantaged in that fundamental right to vote. The Scottish Government has written to the UK Government to call for a full investigation and will share, obviously, any response to Parliament at the appropriate time. Thank you. I call Adam Tompkins to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Adam Tompkins. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. It's symbolic, isn't it, that at a time that there are now no longer any Labour MEPs representing Scotland, there are no Labour MSPs uh, in this chamber to ask questions of the Cabinet Secretary on these elections. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary this? Um, given that Europe is the dominant political issue of our times, whether we like that uh, or not, it is, what is the Scottish Government's reaction to the fact that only two-fifths of the Scottish electorate voted at all on Thursday last week? Three-fifths of the Scottish electorate chose to stay at home and, and not to vote at all. 
Is the Scottish Government content with that level of voter turnout? And if the Scottish Government shares my concern that that level of turnout is too low for a healthy democracy, what does the Scottish Government propose, if anything, to do about it? Cabinet Secretary. Now, I understand why the Labour Party, but also the Conservatives, want to airbrush the European Parliament election results aside. But let's be clear, this was one of the biggest turnouts at the European elections ever. I think it's the highest since 1994. So rather than people staying away, they deliberately went out to vote to make sure that their voices were heard. And I think that's to be welcomed. Indeed, across uh, the European Union, uh, there was a high turnout in terms of uh, responses. So I don't think it's good enough for the Conservatives to come here and somehow blame the Scottish people. What they should be doing is reassessing the situation and making sure that Scotland's needs are protected. And the best thing the Conservatives could do in this parliament is to join the rest of us in making sure that there is no deal is off the table and that we make sure that there can be another opportunity for the Scottish people and indeed the rest of the UK to vote to ensure that we remain in Britain. We can stop Brexit if we act together. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. Can I offer my sincere congratulations to those who were elected, my sincere hope that they will have the opportunity to represent Scotland throughout the entire term of this European Parliament, uh, and also offer my commiserations to David Martin, who, as the Cabinet Secretary has said, uh, has earned the sincere respect uh, of, of colleagues from across the political spectrum. Is the Scottish Government still committed to legislation to ensure that the right to vote is based on residency, not citizenship? Because this, this, it seems to me, is one of the most important things that we can do to address the, the, sh the shared concerns that uh, Mr. Adam has raised about EU citizens being disenfranchised. Would it not be the simplest thing to make sure that that devolved legislation controls the franchise for all elections that take place in Scotland so that we're never in this mess again? Cabinet Secretary. I think the member is right to raise this issue. It is a fundamental one. I talked about rights of citizens um, and indeed the uh, legislation that we plan to bring forward uh, recognises the importance of residency in terms of the franchise. Uh, I would uh, reiterate that it's important that we gather the information of the different experiences. Uh, we particularly looked at uh, different parts of the country and I know in my own council area there was not the same issues as there were elsewhere, which also underlines the fact that this could and should have been tackled. And I think it's an absolute disgrace and a scandal that many of our, uh, our fellow uh, citizens here in Scotland were not able to exercise their fundamental rights. Question number two, Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. <clears throat> to ask the Scottish Government what advice it's providing to North Lanarkshire Council in light of reports that blue water at Buchanan High School may have been linked to health concerns among staff. Minister Joe Fitzpatrick. The distribution and storage of water on school property is a matter for the local authority. I understand that Scottish Water, SEPA and NHS Lanarkshire have been working with North Lanarkshire Council on this matter. Fulton McGregor. Yeah, I thank the Minister for that response and I'd like to take this opportunity to put on record my thanks to the head teachers and all staff at Buchanan and neighbouring St Ambrose High Schools who have continued to act professionally throughout this speculation and like all schools in the area, deliver excellent outcomes for pupils against a backdrop of challenging demographic circumstances. The Minister will be aware of comments from Professor Andrew Watson of Stirling University's Occupational Environmental Health Research Group that, and I quote, the reported ill health cases do not merit, do merit serious investigation and it is understandable that staff, pupils and others who work on the site are anxious. Does the Minister agree that North Lanarkshire Council should properly investigate concerns and that parents, pupils and staff should be kept properly informed about by the Council to help going some way to mediating the, anxi the anxiety some may have. Minister. I think um, the concern and anxiety there is is, is understandable. So I, I absolutely agree that North Lanarkshire Council should take the concerns of parents, pupils and staff very seriously when it comes to this matter. Um, so ensuring that there's a thorough investigation um, into um, and what can be done to mitigate any potential risks, I think is a, a sensible and pragmatic approach. And Fulton McGregor. Uh, thanks, President Officer. The Minister may be, may be aware that I'm holding a public meeting next month on the matter of the 6th of June, uh, which is in conjunction with local councillors and which North Lanarkshire Council have assured me will be attended by officials. I uh, will also ensure that the local MP and other ward councillors are invited. Would the, the Minister consider the possibility that a Scottish Government official may attend this meeting also? Minister. Well, well, first of all, I'm pleased that North Lanarkshire Council are attending as they are 
they have the statutory responsibility for the school estate. But I, I do agree with the member that the Scottish Government um, being attended would be, a, would be a good thing too. And so my office will make sure that that happens. Um, obviously, I'm, if you could send us the, the details of when the meeting is happening. Um, in addition, I would expect the, the local health board, the NHS Lanarkshire, to be represented at that meeting too. Uh, Margaret Mitchell to be followed by Alex Neal. Margaret uh, Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given the school is built on a, a toxic waste dump, is the Minister satisfied that appropriate environment impact assessment was carried out and is he aware of any related conditions attached to the granting of that planning permission? Minister. So ov obviously that would predate my, my position in this office and, and um, almost certainly any, any uh, previous position. But I think the points are, th these are questions I think people are wanting answers to. Um, I'm not aware of any direct link between um, copper, which is suggested to be the, the issue here, and, and the particular types of cancer. But clearly there's something going on and we need to understand it, which, which is why I think the, the point that Fulton made about the local authority having a, a full investigation and working with the likes of SEPA um, in order to make sure we, that is as ro robust as possible to give um, people in the, the local area, particularly parents, children and, and uh, the, the staff at the school, confidence in, in the safety. And Alan Neal. Presiding officer, can, can I ask the minister and first of all point out, in addition to the four teachers at the school, which was built on toxic landfill, uh, four teachers have developed the same rare cancer as also a constituent of mine whose son has become blind and there is a medical suspicion that uh, the blue water may have contributed to that or some other toxic ingredient on the site. In the light of the public concern, will the minister, assuming the council, uh, if, if the council doesn't carry out a satisfactory and robust independent inquiry into this to allay public fears uh, and to inform people, will the minister then consider intervening because clearly public health is a statutory requirement for the Scottish Government as well as for the Council, Scottish Water and the Health Board. Minister. So the, the member is absolutely right about the statutory responsibility. Education Scotland Act um, 1980 places a statutory responsibility on all local authorities to manage and maintain their school estate. So um, I, I sincerely hope that the local authority does take that responsibility seriously and, and the kind of investigation that um, we've talked about should go ahead in order to give uh, people confidence. Um, and, and clearly, I, th I think part of the discussions around what that should look like needs to be um, with other agencies such as SEPA, such as Scottish Water and such as um, public health um, uh, officials within NHS Lanarkshire. Thank you very much. And that concludes topical questions. We're going to move on in a second to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 17342 in the name of John Finney on stage one of the Children Equal Protection from Assault Scotland Bill. We'll just take a few moments for uh, the members and minister to change seats.